So let me introduce the next speaker. It's Sharon Stark. Chaudhry, oh, sorry. Sharesta <laughs> Chaudhry. Sorry, sorry. Sharesta is currently with the Safe Weather Network, a weather sector think and do tank that accelerate the development of innovative solutions to ensure access to sustainable and affordable source of water in Ghana and India. Safe Water coordinated public, private, and non-profit expertise now to advance the most promising and practical approach for broad-scale global impact. As a senior program associate at Safe Water Network, Seresta is responsible for market development activity and program inside for the Indian operation. Thanks, Unisi. Uh, so, good afternoon, everyone. Um, so, I am with Safe Water Network. We function in the the smart water solutions for the the rural sector and the urban poor. Um, our focus is on 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 innovating in the um, you know in in the water model management model space. Uh, while providing water treatment technologies is important, we recognize that for a um, you know a water technology to be sustainable in a village or or in a, a poor urban area, um, it's important to get all of the metrics right. It's important for for that that model to be socially sustainable, to be uh, environmentally sustainable, to have the right kind of institutional support and community support, and then finally, obviously, to be operationally and financially sustainable. Uh, I'll start us off with with a couple of statistics, um, and I'll build on what Mr. Keshav Chandra was saying. Um, if you look at, we've been talking about, you know, the the, the cityscape so far, um, but if you look at um, the, you know, the the composition of the Indian population, 70% of our people live in, in villages, right? And uh, 100 million Indians today lack access to water in the <coughs> villages. 50% um, um, of our villages, of rural citizens, do not have access to piped water in their homes. So they're either going uh, to, to a common village uh, resource, you know, a hand pump or a bore well uh, or an open, you know, pond, river and so on. Um, so 400 million people without access to piped water, um, 67,000 contaminated habitations and growing. So this is contaminations across arsenic and fluoride, nitrates from, um, you know, fertilizer runoff, um, you know, high salinity levels, iron, heavy metals, um, you know, and, and also micro microbial contamination. And so uh, microbial contamination every year leads to the deaths of uh, 140,000 uh, children because of diarrhea and other waterborne diseases. Uh, in this space, you know, across uh, village pipe water solutions and, you know, independent kind of community uh, village water access technologies, 50% of what is constructed, of the infrastructure that's invested, fails within, within a year of construction. Uh, and so this kind of points at gaps in the management model itself uh, that need to be uh, innovated on. So that leads me to, to a quick discussion of what, what it is that we work on. Uh, we, we, we work on, we build what we call small water enterprises at the village level. Uh, typically, these are, these focus, these identify the kind of water contaminations that exist uh, in a particular village and then we will work with various private partners to identify technologies that would be the best fit for uh, that village, so these may be just, you know, your reverse osmosis technology or uh, some sort of a salinity treatment uh, or general filtration and so on. Um, our, our focus here is to make this technology affordable and reliable um, since we want this to be owned and operated by the village itself. Uh, the, the reason it's, we've been focusing on at, you know, um, on ownership at the village level um, is because Financially, um, you know, funds, government funds have are typically scarce. Um, 
or do not make their way down to the village level. So if you look at um, our, our water budget from the, the Ministry of Drinking Water and Sanitation, uh, we have a budget of, of 6,500 crores. That's a little um, under a billion dollars per year. Uh, but what is needed to get us to 100% pipe water is about $78 billion um, of an investment. And so if our annual investment is about a billion dollars, that, that's going to be many years to get to 100% pipe water. Um, and so there needs to be additional, um, an additional influx of, of investments and cheaper um, technology solutions coming in to, to meet to bridge this gap. Um, another thing that comes to mind is, uh, you know, Mr. Keshav Chandra was talking about his hometown, Bihar. And if you look at, there's a huge disparity in pipe water access across different states. So um, there are states that have 100% pipe water. Uh, so your Kerala and Karnataka, um, you know, Karnataka is at, at 90 something percent and, um, and Tamil Nadu and so on um, are almost at 100% pipe water, but then uh, Bihar and Uttar Pradesh and Madhya Pradesh, they are at 10% or 15 or 20% water, piped water. Um, and so what, what, needs, what is needed as the government works towards bringing piped water to rural communities, we need to explore interim solutions um, to, to bridge that gap, that piped water gap in the rural sector. Uh, and so, so that brings me back to um, you know, to these small water enterprises. So every small water enterprise will, will involve, you know, the best fit treatment technology for a village. Um, there's typically, uh, all of these plants are remotely monitored. Um, villagers are given, um, you know, an RFID card, that RFID tagged card that they use to make, um, to, to buy water from uh, these small water enterprises. Uh, the small water enterprises, like I mentioned, are locally owned and operated. So this means that um, we train village uh, residents. So these may be women who are often semi-literate, uh, but we will train them to, to operate uh, the plant and check, uh, you know, what chemicals are needed and, and you know, keep track of, um, you know, what needs to go in if, uh, you know, what um, you know, when do, do maintenance, does maintenance need to happen and so on. Uh, and so off the, the 164 plants that we have set up in the last few years uh, in Karnataka, in Uttar Pradesh, um, and in Telangana, um, our, <coughs> our downtimes have, have been kept to 2% and under across all of these plants. And, and a key part of this is active centralized, uh, you know, remote monitoring off these plants, off uh, of the, the efficiencies of these plants, and then also ha making sure that we have skilled, trained personnel, um, you know, that, that reside in these rural areas that are able to, to manage these plants. Um, another aspect of uh, this, this model is, uh, is activating consumers, or, or demand generation, as we call it, um, for, for a, a village level, village owned plant to be sustainable, uh, about 70, we've noticed that about 75% of the village needs to be an active user of that plant. Uh, and so for us, before, before the village even launches this plant, we invest in grassroots education programs uh, for the villagers to, to educate them on the importance of, of drinking clean, treated water, of uh, the potential waterborne diseases in their, in their communities. Um, and, and so we bring people together um, and, and register them to this plant so that you know, they're, they're, they become, gradually become active users. Um, and then another key aspect um, if this plant is going to be owned and operated solely by the village, then it's important that the, the local government of the village has buy-in, um, has ownership for this village. And so we work closely with uh, the, the Gram Panchayat and the Sarpanch uh, for this buy-in. And also, um, we will identify local investors that would want to invest and own this um, own this plant. So, so typically there'll be a, a local village enter, you know, entrepreneur. Many of our entrepreneurs at the village level are, say, headmasters of schools that are interested, that are science and technology teachers, and they're interested in, in this space. Um, and we ensure that, that the way our financial model is set up um, is that they, you know, entrepreneurs 
20% off gross margins go to these entrepreneurs. So they're invested in owning and, and maintaining these uh, small water enterprises at the village level. Uh, this is a quick picture of one of the, uh, the technologies set up in our plants that we train um, local villagers to then, then operate throughout the year. Uh, another you know, discussion that arose in, in previous conversations was um, how closely energy is tied to water access. Um, and so in states like Uttar Pradesh, uh, where, you know, sees, depending on the season, especially in summers, there's, uh, you know, several hours of power outages, we are unable to provide water because our plant is down and it's not treating. And so we've invested in solar panels for, uh, for those areas, and that obviously adds to the capital cost of, of a plant, but in the long run, it brings down, uh, you know, it, it improves downtimes and... Uh, or uptime, sorry, and, and you know, it, um, it brings down our operating costs in the long run. Uh, delivery, we have several delivery mechanisms, um, you know, different mechanisms work for different villages. Oftentimes there isn't, you know, road delivery infrastructure doesn't exist. We don't have tankers available to fill water in and deliver to people's houses. So, so our, our villagers innovate in many ways. Um, you know, you will see there is a bullet cart um, you know, driven tank, um, and so this this tank is filled up um, and driven to people's houses, and and you know they buy the water, um, and you know alternatively they will come to the the treatment plant itself. Um, that the picture at the bottom right is the picture of the the head of the village, the, the local sarpanch, bringing his uh, his can and and filling it in at the plant itself. Uh, On a financial model basis, and I'll skip a couple of slides uh, as I'm running short on, on time, um, on the, the financial sustainability is, is a challenge for us, uh, right? Because uh, you're, you're injecting um, you know, a, a bunch of capital, multiple players are, are investing in this, uh, in this technology and in this plant. Uh, and so what we look at is is pricing, it, that we realize that it's important for water to be priced. And this, this again goes back to the debate that, um, that Mr. Chandra was, uh, you know, was talking about, that, that a majority of the people believe that, that water should be a public good, water is a public good, and it should be a free resource. Um, but for these plans to be independently operational and, and sustainable, uh, we, you know, we, we end up pricing the water at 25 pesa per liter, so this is five rupees for 20, uh, 20 liters, um, and this covers operational costs. So five rupees, um, 25 pesa is about 0.3 cents. Um, so this covers oper the operational cost of, of hiring an operator or paying the operator to run the plant. Um, this covers the costs of, of chemicals and any other um, you know, uh, operating materials required. And then part of this, uh, this income, you know, assuming that you have 75% of the village kind of engaged in buying from this plant, part of these finances then also goes into something we call a sustainability fund. So this is, um, we typically invest in a cluster of villages. That way uh, you, have, you have sort of an ecosystem of plants in, in one area. And so if one plant fails, we use the sustainability fund that we collect every month to to buy or pitch, help them pitch in for a big capital injection and buy whatever part of that plant failed. So that again becomes an important part of ensuring long-term sustainability of the plants, how you, how you set up that financial model. Um, and, and like I mentioned before, uh, you know, we, we invest in technologies that help us bring, bring the, the quality of the water to WHO uh, standards. Uh, we set up, we do a lot of research before we even enter a village. We, we do research into the sources available. Uh, oftentimes we are in areas where the groundwater is so depleted that the source may run out in six months. Um, and so we, we then invest in multiple, uh, in building multiple sources and connecting them to our plants. And that is also a part of, of long-term sustainability. Um, so I'll close my presentation there. You know, um, part of, of this management model, if we want to bring water in a smart way to, to villages in India, is to ensure 360 degree sustainability across uh, you know, social access, across operations, across financial, across institutional support 
from local government, and then finally environmentally to make sure that you're treating the water and so on. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Um, so engage people um, about the, the, the importance of water and make some culture about it. It's really interesting. We, we could come back to this point later.